Hello everyone and welcome back to uh, Dinosaur Days. I'm going to do a video um, that's a little bit different this time. It's going to be more um, practical in the sense of preparing fossils using uh, uh, vinyl acetate glue. Um, what we refer to as Vinac. I used, I couldn't find any um, lab grade Vinac. Uh, polyvinyl acetate would be the, uh, the uh, actual terminology for that, uh, chemical formula and all that. Um, so Vinac glue is, in essence, polyvinyl acetate dissolved in acetone. So, essentially I bought some of this Fibertac, or Fabertac glue, um, which is itself essentially Vinac, uh, polyvinyl acetate, um, only very thick when you buy it at the store, so I had to dilute it in acetone. So the that's what I used here, along with some uh, typical paint brushes. Uh, you can get them at the store for maybe five bucks. Same with this glue; it's five or six bucks, um, and some standard acetone. Again, that's about six or seven dollars um, at like Walmart or something. So, as you can see here, this is a piece of uh, carbonized wood preserved in a concretion from the Astoria Formation from the coast of Oregon. Uh, this is carbonized, not to be confused with a petrified wood, like in the sample here. Um, the wood is not stone. It's simply been converted into uh, basically carbon in the uh, coalification process. It's on the way to becoming coal, essentially. Um, so you go from wood through... Uh, a series of steps to get to what we call brown coal or lignite and and it goes through a few more steps and gets to a black or bituminous coal and this is somewhere um, in the midway along that transition there it's a little kind of dark blackish brown um, there is a heavy amount of carbon carbonization here if I zoom in um, you can see that the uh, Wood itself is very chunky looking, like it would break off into little blocks basically. It has a few veins of uh, calcite running through it as well. Um, there's also a nice little snail shell there, cross section of one at least. Um, but there's also kind of these weird little pits in the wood itself where like, like um, worms and, and little uh, animals have been eating on it. Um, you can see that a little bit better here. Um, any, <clears throat> excuse me. Anyway, um, the preparation process. Basically, I would take a container of this FiberTac glue again, um, dilute it by half or maybe 75% with uh, the acetone. Uh, mix that up in the container there. You can just shake it. Um, to get a nice mix going and then really just kind of paint it on lightly uh, to your fossils. This one's been painted a little bit heavily um, because I did it in the field and I wanted to make sure it didn't fall apart. Also my acetone glue was a little bit thick and so it was a little bit harder. Um, I didn't realize how thick it was until it was kind of too late and so that's the other reason why this is on a little bit too thickly. Um, if we look back at this petrified wood sample, so this is uh, petrified wood, it's stone. Um, the Astoria Formation in Oregon especially is uh, very rich in wood. Um, it was like a shallow sea type environment and um, because of that you have um, a lot of uh, what you'd call like deltaic or are shallow uh, marine deposits uh, that have a lot of wood in it, carbonized wood and petrified wood. So there's the petrified stone um, wood, basically. So that's been replaced with essentially silica or quartz. Um, again, this not as much. This would basically crumble into pieces um, without being glued. Um, with that being said, I did smack open a concretion and find this in the state that it's in now so it was a very nice break and immediately glued it with my too thick Vinac glue 
Um, so what I'm going to do now is kind of try to dilute that down a bit with the acetone and um, re-glue it essentially. So, um, basically what I'm going to do here, and uh, I might put the phone down just for a second because I'm filming this on my phone, but uh, I'm going to open the acetone and pour some out into the lid of this Pringles can and just put some onto a paintbrush and then I'll be painting that on um, to the fossil here and uh, get some of this thick glue off of there. And then what I'll do is I'll let that dry a bit and if it looks good I'll leave it, but if it uh, looks like it needs a little bit thicker of a coat or if it's looking a little bit too delicate I'll layer on a coat of thin paint that won't look as uh, rough as this does. So, you can see that kind of shiny um, globbiness. That's the glue that went on a little bit too thick and didn't spread out very well. So give me just one second to pour that acetone and then I'll uh, show you guys how this is done. Okay, so I went ahead and I poured the acetone into this lid here. What I'm going to do is just get a little bit on this paintbrush, not too much. I'll kind of dab it off on this paper and then just kind of paint the acetone itself on. I'm going to be very careful not to, uh, not to disturb any little pieces of carbonized wood because this thing will flake apart very easily if I'm too rough with it. And I got a little bit of the acetone on the rock there, that's fine. That won't do any damage. Um, it will evaporate very readily, that's why this glue is so good for doing um, field type work uh, or preparation of fossils in general. It's because it does not take long to set. Because basically what you have is a plastic dissolved in acetone and when the acetone evaporates, the uh, plastic is left behind. Um, and the acetone does not evaporate. It does not take long for it to evaporate. And oh, I cut my finger when I was opening the acetone. I'm kind of bleeding all over the place, but I will at least finish painting this layer on. And I'll let it dry and take care of this cut finger. Um, so you can kind of see where I'm painting it on the acetone. There's some kind of, uh, it might be a little bit hard to see. There we go. There's kind of this rubbery layer. That's what you want it to avoid. And that's why I'm trying to dilute it down a bit. Because there's a couple areas where that's very obviously happening. And um, like I said, you really don't want to avoid that. <laughs> Or you want to avoid that, excuse me. I'm kind of like... Got my mind in three places at once right now. Um, I'd recommend if you get the chance... I've got to take my finger and get that taken care of. I'll uh, just show you really quick what I did to myself when I opened the acetone. Um, spoiler alert here. There you go. Um, but... Uh, was I saying, if you get the chance to check out the Astoria Formation, I'd really recommend it. It's uh, about 18 to 20 million year old Eocene, or excuse me, Miocene deposits, uh, marine Miocene. And very interesting, there was some uh, volcanic ash deposits there that were deposited uh, by volcanism in a marine type setting. And uh, so the the ash was deposited in water, essentially, is what I'm getting at with that. But then you have kind of exposed mudstone rocks from, like, deeper in the sea. And very interesting geology. Um, I found vertebrate fossils over there as well. Things like whale vertebrae and uh, uh, vertebra from, like, large seals and walrus. 
as well as uh, uh, porpoise vertebrae. Um, let me see what else. Uh, porpoise limb bones, as well as uh, uh, a skull of an uh, Argyrocetus, uh, porpoise skull, and uh, Desmostylian bones, um, which are kind of like hippo like creatures. But anyway, I hope that that's actually looking pretty good right now, so I'll probably leave it. Um, I might dilute it down a little bit more um, and then leave it afterwards. But I hope that was useful to you, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.